Welcome to SIMA's 23rd Annual Snow and Ice Symposium Tech Talks. Today I'll be talking about wear versus scrape, creating a strategy to optimize your plow performance. My name is Seth Bergrud. I am the Product Manager for Service Parts and Accessories for Douglas Dynamics. I've been with Douglas Dynamics for eight years. Prior to my time at Douglas, I worked for about six years in construction equipment. When it comes to your plowing strategy, there are often two distinct strategies that are in conflict. The first is to maximize cutting edge life. Maximizing cutting edge life often means less maintenance and downtime associated with changing edges on a repeating basis. However, there can often be sacrifices to the level of service as your customers perceive it because the scrape isn't quite as clean. Or if you're delivering the same level of service, very often that means using more salt. The second strategy is the clean scrape strategy. In achieving the cleanest possible scrape, you're often increasing the frequency that your edges will need to be replaced. But that clean pavement is often associated with a better level of service, and you're achieving that same result using less salt. In order to evaluate the strategies, we really have to understand how they work. And understanding how they work means understanding the calculations behind them and analyzing the results. Let's take a look at calculating cutting edge life. Simply stated, the life of the cutting edge is determined with two variables, the volume of usable material and the rate at which the material is removed from the edge as you plow. Let's start by looking at the volume of usable material. The volume of material is equal to the length times the width times the usable height. As example, let's look at a nine foot blade with a half inch cutting edge. Converting to inches, we have 108 inches of length times a half inch of width or thickness and 3.39 inches of usable height. That equates to 183 cubic inches of usable material. Now let's talk about material removal rate. This is a little more complex. There are many variables that affect the material removal rate. The first is contact pressure, or the amount of pressure being placed on the cutting edge. The second is friction. The amount of friction is the result of many factors, one of which is the surface conditions. Snowy and icy conditions have less friction. Surface material will also impact the amount of friction. A blacktop parking lot, pavers, or concrete will have different friction values. The other factor to consider is speed. The faster you're traveling, the less friction is involved. It seems counterintuitive, but it's true. One of the factors that you have a lot of control over is the cutting edge material. There are a wide array of materials available to contractors today. Everything from rubber, to poly, to steel, to carbide are available commonly in the market. The last variable we'll consider today is temperature, or maybe climate. While we don't have a lot of control over temperature, we do have great detail on our climate and what the average temperatures are. Temperatures can impact material removal rate greatly, so it's something we need to consider. Now that we've outlined the variables we're going to consider, let's talk about the tactics we can use to minimize them and optimize the material removal rate. The first one is by minimizing contact pressure. Contact pressure is a function of the downward force over the area of contact. The greater downward force there is, the greater the contact pressure, and the faster the material will be removed. Removing unnecessary weight from the plow can help minimize downward force. As an example, this might mean choosing a smaller deflector. Increasing the area of contact can also be impactful. Thicker edges mean more surface area. Plowshoes can also add significant amount of contact area and reduce the overall pressure and removal rate. Finally, a lesser angle of attack can increase the amount of cutting edge surface in contact with the ground and also help slow the removal rate. 
In trying to reduce friction, there aren't a lot of factors that are under our control, but there are certainly things we need to consider and keep in mind. Flat versus uneven surfaces will have different results on cutting edge wear. Uneven surfaces can put excessive pressure on certain parts of the plow. For example, when plowing along curbs, if there is a curve in the concrete, that can more quickly wear the portion in contact with that curb. Smooth versus rough surfaces are also impactful on friction, as well as loose versus solid surfaces. Whether the surface is wet or the surface is dry will also impact friction. And finally, optimizing speed for the conditions is important. While I noted that increased speed can reduce friction, it's important to optimize the speed for the conditions and plow in the safest possible way. One of my favorite topics when talking about cutting edge wear is materials. Material science has come so far offering new lightweight materials with different strengths and weaknesses and different things to consider. It can be overwhelming. Keeping it simple, thicker edges wear more slowly but can add significant weight. Hardened materials like carbide improve wear dramatically but add weight to the vehicle, can increase surface damage, and can also be expensive. Softer materials wear more rapidly but are typically lighter, are easier on surfaces, and can also be expensive depending on the material. Finding the right material for your application or your typical application is extremely important. Increases in surface damage or putting your vehicle in an unsafe condition can outweigh any gains in cutting edge wear very quickly. This is where the OEM can really help give guidance and add value. Nobody understands the workings of the plow better than the person who designed and manufactured it. Choosing the right material can make all the difference in performance, and so giving that guidance and leaning on that OEM for guidance is important. As we talk about optimizing cutting edge wear, one of the things we need to keep in mind is temperature, and maybe not so much temperature, but certainly climate. Understanding your typical conditions is important in your decision. The altitude you're plowing at can be one factor to consider. Are you high up in the mountains where the air is dry, or are you along the seashore where wet snow tends to be more prevalent? Latitude can also be important. Further south, you might receive less snowfall, but further north you may have frequent snowfall. And of course, large bodies of water can have significant impact on the climate of the region. If you're near the Great Lakes, you may be dealing with lake effect snow. If you're near the ocean, heavy wet snow may be something that you deal with on a regular basis. All of these impact how often the plow is down. The longer you're plowing during an event, the more material removal rate you should plan and prepare for. So to summarize, while there's a lot to consider, we can boil down a strategy to optimizing for wear in a couple of things. First, selecting the right material for your applications is important. Thicker and harder materials certainly improve wear rate. Be cautious of safety, the weight impact on your vehicle, and the risk of damage to lots and surfaces. You also might consider complementary accessories. Shoe kits and back drag edges increase surface area and can reduce wear on the cutting edge. Be cautious of aftermarket solutions. While they may save you some money, they can be impactful on how your plow works and dramatically impact the weight on the vehicle. Shifting gears, let's talk a little bit about a clean scrape strategy. Within this strategy, we're trying to maximize contact pressure and maximize surface contact. Maximizing contact pressure can be achieved in many ways. Adding weight is the simplest. Heavier plows simply scrape better. A second way to accomplish the same thing is by adding downward pressure. Systems such as the Scrape Max feature by SnowX hydraulically add downward pressure to the system. A third way to maximize contact pressure is by minimizing surface contact area. Removing shoes or using thinner material are quick ways to increase the pressure on the cutting edge, improving the overall scraping performance. 
The last one we'll talk about is increasing the angle of attack. And to do that, we're going to take a closer look at the Fisher HDX plow, which has an adjustable angle of attack. The HDX plow is unique in that it can be adjusted in three different angles of attack. Moving from left to right, the first angle of attack is 75 degrees, a very aggressive scrape angle. This aggressive scrape angle impacts the plow in two ways. It shortens the distance from the vehicle to the cutting edge, and it also reduces the thickness of the cutting edge that is in contact with the surface. On the far right, the HDX plow is adjusted to 55 degrees angle of attack. In this position, the increased angle increases the cutting edge surface in contact with the ground significantly. The overall impact of going from a 75 degree aggressive attack angle to a 55 degree angle of attack equates to almost an additional two and a half pounds of pressure per square inch. While that may not seem like a lot of pressure, it can have a significant impact on the plow's scraping ability. The second element to a clean scrape is maximizing surface contact. This can be achieved by using pivoting or oscillating product. The Western brand is known for its pivot bar system that allows the plow to roll with uneven surfaces, ensuring that the cutting edge is in contact with the ground longer, ensuring snow is removed more thoroughly and less salt can be used. Utilizing down pressure systems like Scrape Max also help ensure that as the surface changes, the plow remains in contact. Using a strategy that optimizes for scrape can be a great decision for your business. An important piece is selecting the right plow. Heavier plows have more downward pressure. Look for an aggressive attack angle in the equipment that you choose. Optimizing that equipment with it, the right accessories is also important. Removing shoes, finding thinner cutting edges, or adding accessories like scrape max can be a great addition as well. Finally, utilizing pretreatment with soap brine can be an excellent way to improve the overall scrape. By pretreating, the snow and ice doesn't adhere to the pavement and you can clean the surface more effectively. So what's the right strategy? Is it the cleaner scrape or longer cutting edge life? The answer is both. What's most important is that you have a plan. Understand your customer's needs. Understand the conditions and the environment that you're plowing in. Form your strategy. Understand how your plow works. And then configure your equipment to fit your strategy. In the end, either can be successful if you have a plan. I'd like to take a moment to thank you. Thank you for your business. Thank you for taking some time to educate yourself. And thank you for everything that you do to keep us safe and keep the economy moving when Mother Nature delivers her worst each winter. My best wishes to you for a very successful 2021 season. Thank you. Do you have questions or feedback regarding this presentation? Please feel free to reach out and contact me. You can reach me at info at douglasdynamics.com. In your email, please reference Sima Tech Talk, Wear versus Scrape, and it will be routed appropriately. Thank you.